All right. Uh, good morning, once more, everyone, and welcome back to today's class. That's um, class two of front end development beginner. And um, I like to say, well, last week was um, more of introduction to front end development and how, why do people jump into front end development, the difference between front end development and back end development. So, and what are the things we need to get done? How are we supposed to be a front end developer? The, the, the frameworks, libraries, or languages we need to know to, to be a front end developer. So, and today we are going to be uh, jumping straight into the practical HTML of building a simple HTML page. We already did some, we already did one last week. We built a simple cat, cat um, page, which uh tell us about the name of our cards the some list items of our cards and all of that so today we are going to be going fully into uh building the simple cards page we are, going, we are going to use cards still so we are going to go fully into building that but then before before we get to that i would like to um i would like to brush us through the free set of front-end development also. I can remember last week we were running out of time. So uh, sorry, uh, on Tuesday we were running out of time. I had to jump some of these items. So let me just see if we can brush through some of it again. All right. So I said HTML, like you already know, is X markup language. We explained that last week. Uh, more of the skeletal structure of our web, of our front end development, that is skeletal structure. Something like I give an example that, um, for example, and is you know, when you are in the skeleton, it gives all the structure of how you want the body to look like the height, the, the, the width of the person, where you want the hand to be, and all of that. So that is the structure, how HTML is structured. Is the arrangement of your website how you want it to look like without this? To the body, now going to start applying uh, styling, color, uh, theme uh, to the web page, to your codes. That's to the body, and and JavaScript is when you're applying functions. Functions, I mean, when you want the body you're creating to work. When you want it to work, so there has to be a function. You write a code to make this body work. Uh, to 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 how do I use it in the correct language? Mobilize, you know, you no. Know? Okay, I think to talk. I've forgotten this, Mister Ninja. The movement and uh, hand to move, to respirate, to all those Mister Ninja this stuff. So that's what we do with JavaScript. To write code to make all of these things functional. So and the same thing is applicable to web development when you write your code. You write the structure of your code, you style it, and then use the JavaScript to give it the function. How do you want it to behave? So the responsive design is, um, like I explained last week also, how uh, uh, to make your web responsive on both mobile and desktop. Make it responsive on both mobile and desktop. But, uh, what I mean by responsive is, okay, when you have, for example, you have a wide screen on your desktop, which is very big. When you have the same size on your mobile, it may be too big. So you have to find a way to ensure that your website, if it is looking really nice and presentable and accessible on desktop, you have to make it also presentable and accessible on mobile or on tablet. If you notice some websites, when you visit them on desktop, there is no um, a menu bar, like a nav, a nav drop down. But so the, the, the navigation is mostly displayed on the screen, mostly at the top of the page. But for the, for the uh, purpose of uh, responsiveness on mobile, the navigation is mostly hidden inside a menu bar, whereby you have to click on a menu to, 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 to see some of this navigation. That's just a way of achieving responsiveness on mobile. But if you leave those navigation out there like that, it's going to be too long for your mobile to display. So best is to hide it and make it visible in a, a, a drop down. 
So that's just, there, there are different ways, uh, different approaches to responsive design based on however you want to. Like UIX design has made it um, in my kind of design. So that's responsive design. Then the front end frameworks and library, we said that it, last week or uh, last Tuesday also, is uh, the React, the um, Angular. We have some libraries. Like, we have some frameworks for CSS also. We have Bootstrap, we have Flowing, we have JavaScript library, we have React and Angular. So these are the front and uh, the frameworks and the library. And then library um, tools you use that enables or allows you to be able to use your uh, to, to write your code easily. It helps you to write your code easily. Instead of maybe you need a calendar, instead of writing the calendar in full yourself, then you just Go to the library and then check the documentation and then do some import and all of those. Then easily you have a calendar and your code without writing the code. Okay, so that's just what libraries are meant for. And framework also helps you in achieving what you are supposed to achieve. Time writing the rest and system alone helps you to achieve it in a very short time. Version control is um it helps you manage your code, manage your uh code it helps you uh, uh like collaborate <clears throat> helps you track your code changes and then enable collaboration and fashion management like i gave an example last week as git of uh, github which allows you to collaborate with someone who is not around you someone who is uh, for example in a remote area and then you need to collaborate you're in nigeria you need to collaborate with someone who is in who is in canada or who is in um Cameroon or stuff. So you can easily using using Git, GitHub as an example of version control, you can easily communicate with this person, collaborate with this person, and you work together with the person. It helps you manage your code, it helps you track your code changes. What okay, what I did yesterday, what I have done today. That's version control. And we are, we'll get to we'll introduce more of GitHub to ourselves, say maybe uh week, week two or week three. So now we're going to understand better what version control is all about. So then the browser developer tool, I think I explained that last week, uh, last Tuesday also, it helps you to debug, to test your code and debug. More, it's, it's more like the testing and debugging. But testing and debugging is, is I would say, an instance. Okay, so why the browser developer tool is just a tool that allows you, it enables you to, to write, to run this testing and debugging. The browser developer tool is located on your browser. Uh, if you're using Safari, just right click and click on inspect. If you're using, um, okay, see the inspect is even here, just right click and click on inspect. If you are using, um, uh, say Chrome, let me give you an example here. Uh, and then we just open a new tab and then let me inspect here. Okay, so this is a browser developer tool which enables you to check the chain, uh, to debug. If you are having any issue on your code, you can easily come here and see what the problem is. You can see the styling, you can disable some styling, disable some styling here. We are not, we are not going to styling yet because we are still on HTML ball. This allows you to to see your code, to, to debug it, to test, see what is wrong with my code. Okay, but then I will explain more on this moving forward also. So um, then the web performance optimization, one of the one of the uh, major thing we need to take into uh, we need to take very serious as a web developer or front end developer is how our website is performing. Uh, and the optimization of our website. You don't want to create a website, build a website, and then you send it to someone and it takes about, say, 10 minutes before the website even opens. Or maybe yeah, it's, it's, maybe you click on something and then it's, it's misbehaving or taking a very longer time or just like that. You have to make your website optimize. You have to optimize the, the, uh, the performance of your website. Make it optimized, all right? So, and there are two, there are ways in which you check for the performance of your websites, for the efficiency of how you write your code. Is this the best practice? Is this the best way I can write it? Am I supposed to uh, write it a better way? Okay, I think this one will make it more optimized. This one seems to be too bulky, all right? So that's, these are the ways in which you check for 
uh, your web performance optimization. Like I said, just um, this is a way of ensuring that your website is easily accessible and the performance is really smooth when it is open anyway by anybody and they don't complain. So then cross browser compatibility, cross browser. Okay, this my website has to be compatible on every kind of browser, like every kind of browser, Safari, Chrome, Opera Mini, or um, whichever browser that we know that we know of. When you open this uh, web page on this kind of browser or any kind of browser, it should be compatible. It shouldn't be okay. Sorry, this web is not compatible. With this no, it's very wrong because you don't know which browser your client or your client um, uh, your client client base will want to use to open the website. For example, you know, you don't know your client's clients now. So, and mostly everywhere in the world, people use different browsers to open different websites. So that's just, and has to be compatible on all the browsers. Then accessibility, okay. Uh, this one mostly, it, it depends on how the designer has built, has designed the website. Accessibility means, is it even accessible? Can they easily uh, click on this place and then they will get what they want? For example, okay, I open a new website. Is it, is it, can I easily see the instruction or can I easily understand what is going on on the website? All right, it's not some website that you see and then ah, what is wrong with this website? The whole thing is just jump pack and you can't really understand what exactly is going on, what am I supposed to do on this website? You have to make your website um, readable, very neat and readable, make it accessible to, to users so that when they come, they can easily navigate or understand what exactly is going on, what they want to do and how they can do it on the website without even contacting anybody or asking anybody question. So that's, that is that. So, and then um, the testing and debugging, like I explained earlier, when you have issues, you have errors in your code, you, you test it, you debug. After building, after building your website, it is good to run a test so that you see what is used because you can't see everything. There's no way you know all the errors. You can never know all the errors. Definitely, you, you still have something you missed. So after building and you feel, you feel like, okay, I think I'm done with this website, before you deploy to anybody so that you can use it, you can. You can send it to a few of your, you have testing codes, you have our uh, testing tools, you have developers that do testing only, all right? There are people that focus on web testing, code testing, and all of those. So you can send to them around the testing and you can learn it also, and then do your testing yourself, and then do your debugging, fix any error, you debug it, and then fix it, see error, debug it, and then fix it. So that uh, is all about the preset of quantum development. Uh, do we have any question on this before I move forward? If you have any question, I would like to uh, take it now. If you have any question, just raise your hand. Okay, I don't think there's any question. All right, thank you very much. That's interesting. Okay, so today, what we're supposed to do is a practical HTML. We don't want to talk too much. Uh, developers don't talk too much. They do things. That's what we do. We don't have to like talk, talk, talk and all. But let's do something. So uh, again, HTML. Uh, I already explained the doc type, the HTML, the head, that's the head where you have the title, the description of your website, the body, the contents, everything is located in the body. Then we have a title, it's mostly located in the head. The div. Is an element, a container, like I could say, is also a tag where it's more like a container where you wrap your code inside. We are going to use the diff today. Uh, H1 Sorry. to H6. Okay, who is that? I have a question based on the other words you said. I did not see your answer, uh, Andres, so, but no worry. Just, uh, uh, Okay, sorry, I didn't see it. I'm sorry, I didn't see it. Okay, go on, let me ask a question, please. Hello, is it there? You're breaking, honestly. Can you just ask a question? You're free to ask a question. Uh, 
Okay, I think your network is really bad because I can't hear you at all. So um, we'll have to continue. You can drop your question on the chat. Um, Femi Bliss will be there. Is there already to attend to your questions? Okay, because I can't hear you at all, sorry. All right, so moving on, H1 to H2 is extended last uh, Tuesday, adding from one to six to the paragraph. The other list, the on other list, the list items, the anchor tag. We did not mention that last week. I believe most of us must have read about these things from the uh, recommendation I made. So we have the A as the anchor tag, the B as a container, div element as a container. On um, okay, so now this we're going to build a cart photo app. With uh, last week we just built a a text, uh, a cat text app. So today we are going to include photo links on on the application, on the page, on the HTML code that we write. So um, we already explained on how to install Photoshop sure Studio Code on our system. All right. Okay, so from what we did last week, this is the structure of what we did last week. I was able to keep it. So, okay, let me just brush through the VS Code again. I won't waste much time on that. If you already, if you already have VS Code, uh, you don't have to do this. But then if you don't have it, you just go to your browser. Go to your browser, any browser of your choice. Okay. Um, Any browser of your choice, then search for VS Code. It's as simple as that because VS Code is used by almost everybody. VS Code, you see, the browser can easily locate it for you. Then you click on the download. Yeah, you can either open it if you don't want to go straight to download, but it's still the same thing. Just click on download here, yeah, and then it opens this page for you. And then you can, if you're using Window, you can download this window 10 on the level is supported by window 10 on the level. If you're using uh, Ubuntu, uh, Linux, Debian, any of this uh, operating system, you can just download this, any of these two supported. And then if you're on Mac, if you're on Mac OS, then just click on this and then you're good to go to download. This is compatible with everything. Can we, my network is, is blabbing. Can anybody still hear me? Please let me be sure. sure. Please, you can hear me. Just raise your hand, please. Let me be sure. I'm still editing. Okay, thank you, George. Always, George. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay, okay, good. All right, thank you, guys. Yeah, I know I'm audible now. Okay, so then that's the process of downloading the VS code. So after downloading, just wait for it to download finish. It shouldn't take, it's not big, it's about 64. Some is 34, 64, depending on the version, uh, the version and the uh, operating system you're on. So it's not, it's not really big. Then after the download process is successful, click on the, uh, the package, the download package, download the package, and then follow the instruction. Just, uh, well, I would say you can just accept all the, all the pop-ups, all the prompts, just accept, accept, accept. It's not going to affect your system in any way. Just accept everything and then, after everything is going to install by itself automatically. Okay, so, and the installation process is say latest two minutes you are done with the installation process. So it's very, very fast and easy. And after installing, some persons may not know how to install the VS code so that it appears on their desktop. So, well, you are going to get, get an option if you want the installation to, uh, to create a copy on your desktop. So it is best you just click on yes. I like to create a copy on my desktop. So you can easily find VS Code on your desktop instead of looking for, for it somewhere. But then if you miss that part, you can always go to open your start menu. I'm sorry, I'm on Mac, so I won't be able to do most of those things. I believe most of us are on Windows. So open your start menu uh, uh, and then Search for VS Code on your certificate. Click on it and open it. 
that is it it's as simple as that just click on it and it is always this symbol this icon is always the vs code icon this icon let me look for it a bigger way okay so this is always the vs code icon if you can see my screen so when you see it know that okay this is vs code all right then when you open it it's going to look something like this this is how it's going to look like although from the beginning this is how it's going to look like you're going to see a file and uh stops on it if you want to open a file we already explained those ones last week so you can just click on open a file to open vs code from a folder uh sorry open a folder to open this from a folder because it is best well you can work anyhow but it is best to start your project inside a folder it is best to start your project inside a folder this is an example of that let me to try and open a new vs code new windows so this is the new window all right then you can either create a new file new file immediately and start working on it this one is useful when you want to run a very uh, a, a fast test maybe a javascript test or some project by opening a folder okay so that everything you're doing is going to be located inside the folder you can also clone a git repo we are going to get that later a git repo like i said version control git helps us track changes to collaborate so while a repository is located mostly located repository is like um a store or a link yeah like a storage a pack of code a pack of uh, your project which is not located locally but it is located globally it is located on your github so you are going to create a github account exactly so it is located remotely thank you very much so it's located remotely where even if you're not on your system if you have access to your github that's your remote repo you can always go back there fetch uh, clone this repository or fetch everything out there and then you can open your code anywhere in the world on any system as far as you you have access to your github repository github is a is an environment that allows developers to to push their codes like you store your code more like google drive or google does like that so and then the recent is um the recent uh project that you have on that you that you've opened is that the recent okay then the walkthrough is just vs code help if you want to if they want to help you to take you through all of the instances of vs code all right so and then we said this one is the explorer okay this is the search this is a source control it helps with git we already explained all this last week i don't waste much time here and then this is extension extension is very very useful and important very useful because mm -hmm, every language has an extension that helps and enables us you know to so this is something that we're supposed to do in a very long time just helps us to do it easily so yeah these are the extensions that i've installed already so it's just me and, but then by the time you start installing when you start going forward you see you realize that you need more extensions more extension then you just come and search with extension and then install it so we, we installed live server last week ah sorry i would say last week we installed live server as um last tuesday okay so yeah i believe most of us have it installed already so you just yeah if you don't have it installed you're going to see install yeah you just click on it wait for like two or three minutes for you to install and then you are ready to go okay so that's that about it okay i said this place also is an account you can create an account all right sync your account maybe to your github account or whichever account you want to create and then settings how to manage your your uh VS Code uh, view, the interface, the typography, the command palette, the color, the, the file icon, and all of those. So you choose, this is just setting random settings of how you want your VS Code to look like. Okay, so uh, going back to where we were. What is this thing like this? 
going back to where we were last week, we used um, shifts and one to open a project structure to, to you know, I, like I said, VS Code has some snippets that helps you to get everything. Who is, who is Chinwe Anuku? Who is Chinwe Anuku? I don't, I don't understand what is going on there. Okay, so uh, it helps us to get a, a, the structure of our HTML with shift and one, get the structure of our HTML easily without writing it. Okay, so then without all of these, we are going to get this. This is what we are going to get with document instead of the cat. We are going to get documented. I don't know what is going on. Who is Chimwe? Someone is just writing stuff on this. Okay. So, um, then the document. This is what we are going to see. We have a document in our language. After, if you notice the document type. The document type is, if you notice, the document type is a self closing tag. It doesn't, it's not even a self closing tag. It's just a declaration. So it's not, I would say, I won't call it a tag. Okay. It's a declaration because it does not, it does not have a, a closing tag at all. Not even a self closing or a second closing tag. All right. It's just a declaration tag. Well, the second one, the second rule is the HTML. Since we declared a, a, an attribute and then the value, a language attribute, and then set the value to English. So I'll be working on English, that's just the meaning. And then inside the HTML, HTML has an opening tag and a closing tag. Remember when we explained last, uh, last Tuesday, we said some opening tag will have attribute and value. So this is the attribute and then this is the value, All right? So now inside the HTML, we have header, uh, head and body. The head is where you give the description of how you want your website to behave, how you want it to behave, All right? Then the title. So I explained the meta chassis. The UTF is, is an encoding that, allows your code or your HTML or your project to translate whatever you're writing to a, a bit because that's that's computer science stuff. We're writing on a bit eight or something like that. So with the help of chassis TTF, although without it, you can still write your code, all right? But then moving forward, you need to have a, a, a standard structure of the HTML templates uh, like this, all right? So the chassis TTF it is a unified transformation format all right that's specifying okay this is the type of format i want my code to be written as okay so it's, it's how to translate the code you have because you know you have javascript that are written in languages sorry a minute please Sorry, in case you have a question pending the time it comes up, I can just raise up your hand and I would address it. Thank you. Don't unmute. Raise up your hand and I will answer your question. Okay, um, sorry, sorry for the delay. I'm trying, please, uh, let's be careful with the way we use um, the annotate here, yeah, because when you click on it, you get to write stuff on the screen, okay? So let's be careful with the way you use it. You don't have to open it at all, all right? And if you want to open it, maybe if you do anything, it's going to appear on everybody's screen. So just let's be careful with that, all right? Um, Okay, so I explained the UTF, how the code is being translated to a readable code. You know, what we are doing is just the right code. And then how is it translated for the computer? So, you know, okay, translate this into those kind of uh, uh, code 
then that's what we specified. Although mostly these days, those things are not really necessary because there's, there's been an advance, advancement that the browser automatically translates it by itself. All right, so then the second one is uh, compatibility. Uh, you know, uh, mostly people use Internet Explorer before we have all of these different browsers. People use Internet Explorer browse to visit websites. So the second one is align the website to be compatible. This, this, this is my project now. This website should be compatible on Edge, the latest version of Internet Explorer. Latest version of Internet Explorer, that's just the meaning. Although it doesn't stop uh, Mozilla from working, it doesn't stop uh, Explorer um, Chrome from working because there's been an advance, advancement. And like I said, most of these browsers understand and have been able to make sure the browser is compatible with all of any kind of website that's coming. Then the third one is the viewport. The viewport, I said it last year, uh, last Tuesday, that the device with how you want this thing to look on your device. Device is a mobile phone, a laptop, okay, a mobile phone, and the width is the size of the screen, okay. So then. device with that means you should take the device with so whatever the device which is that's what i want you to take okay that's the content here and then the initial scale that's the zoom level initial scale 1.0 that's the default that's the zoom level should be 1.0 if it is more than then it's going to zoom in too much if it is less than it's going to zoom in so much but then like i said the, the browsers have made it so easy right that we don't even need most of this thing anymore you can just do without it and then everything will work very fine with or without all of these things okay so and then the title it tells us what our browser website is all about what is it about i gave an example of school website last week so then if it is a school website let's say excellent um a memorial school then you can just put excellent memorial school as the title of your website all right then we move to the body okay so i'm going to paste this thing again Oh, no. oh, okay. Trying to paste what I thought, but then it's not coming back. Okay. Um, let's just do something else. Okay. I have it. Thank you. Let me just erase this guy. All right. So. We talked about the H1, the H4, the order list, the list item, how to use it. The UL, the difference between the order list and then the on order list. And then why do we have, why do we need the LI inside the order list and the on order list? And then the paragraph. Then this as the bold, the bold, the closing and the uh, opening and the closing of bold. Then also the break. We talked about the break last Tuesday. The Italics break is a self closing tag. As you can see, break does not have a second closing tag, it, it closes itself. If you want to, a self closing tag, mostly closes itself. Something like this. You check my screen, I'll be writing that. Let me say. Uh, just want to write self closed. This is self closing because it closes itself. The symbol of closing is sla a forward slash. For example, if I want to say, okay, we're going to like just say con close. You can just say self. Then I'll have a second close here. As you can see, this is forward slash is a closing tag. But then this self close uh, is closing itself by applying the forward slash in its tag. All right, so it has to be by standard. Okay, some are self closed while some are not self closed. So that's just the difference between that. And then, then the underline is you. So, um, so we'll move forward. We go on the line. Okay. I don't think it's available anymore. 
All right. So, uh, like we did last week, we uh, like we did last week. We open our VS code. Our code from a browser by right clicking on the screen. By right clicking on the screen, type server, just click on it. And then it's going to open your, your code on the live server, as you can see here. So this is what we did last week, my cards, about my cards, the other list name, green, color, and num legs. And then the location, that's the another list, which is the bullet. Then the bold, history of my, sorry, the H4 still. Then we use cat. If you notice, this cat is also bold. Cat is a very cute card. That's because we applied a bold tag. Then because we applied an underline, while the, you can touch my cat, we applied an italic. And here, after the sound, we applied a break for our content to jump to the next line. So um, today we are going to, I hope you can all see my screen. We are going to uh, jump into uh, um, images out to apply image, how to apply. Okay, before I move forward, please, do we have any question? Let me know we are, let me know we are on the same page before I go to the next uh, thing. So I'm going to introduce a few more tags today, the image, the form, form element, the image, and then the link, that's the anchor tag. Okay, David Dose, please uh, omit yourself and ask a question. David Dose. Okay, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So um, I was, I was at that, like the break tag, is it necessary for the slash to be at the end or it's not necessary? Because I observed that even without the slash, the letter can still break. So I just want to know. Well, yeah, well, it's not necessary. Okay. But best practices, because uh, there could be an issue, there could be an issue in the future because of that break, only if you're not following how it's supposed to be written. Okay. The standard is a break should have a self closing tag, but without it, it's still going to work. All right. But it's best to just apply. The self closing tag. Oh, uh, the break. Okay, so Sammy Obuma. Uh, David, kindly just drop your hand so we know. Sammy Obuma. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Okay, uh, your voice will be written, so I didn't really get this self closing, uh, self closing as the closing that you're talking about. I didn't really understand what you're Come again. What what part is that, sir? Okay, the self-closing. Okay, the self-closing. Okay, okay. I will explain that again before. I will explain that again, Sammy. Just give me a minute. Uh, okay. I will explain that immediately after I get me done lies. You don't lie. Okay, your hand is raised again. Let's ask about that self-closing tag. Okay, okay. All right, I'll do that. Thank you. Okay, a self-closing tag, like I said, we have tags that are self-closing and non-self-closing, okay? And if you notice, what we have been using since is, is a non-self-closing, uh, like the OL, this is the opening tag, and then this is the closing tag for uh, OL. I said that the forward slash, I believe this is forward slash, right? The forward slash is... Uh, the symbol of a closing tag. That's what tells you that, okay, this is where this particular tag is closed, all right? So, and in a situation where, okay, let me just give an example. Let's say um, label. You're just joining in with Zoom. Please kindly rename yourself, change your name to your name. So we don't see the Zoom user something, something. Okay, so label. This is an example of a tag, a label, all right? And then we have the opening and the closing here. So the closing has a forward slash before it. 
that's to show you that okay this particular tag has ended here you can have millions of things here you can have thousands of things in between of these things but everything is still inside the label as far as we have not gotten to this closing label tag okay so everything is still within the label so this specifies that okay this particular label has been closed with the fourth slash that's because it is not a non uh self-closing tag all right it's not a non self-closing tag while a self-closing tag uh, okay a self-closing tag could be uh let me look for a self-closing image an image an image could be a self-closing tag like this this one will work with or without it's, it's not even going to work like this when you have a closing tag for it it's not going to work like this say okay you of inside because this is supposed to be a self-closing tag. All right. So it's the strain error because that's not how supposed to be. Okay. So image is a self-closing tag. Uh, it's because they close itself. Like I said, the forward slash is a symbol of the tag, of the tag element. Then that means that is the closing tag. At the end of it like this means this particular tag is a self-closing tag. this is a non-self-closing tag because it, it does not close itself but then needs an additional um tag to close itself so that's just the difference between closing tag and the self-closing tag all right so um we are going to uh Uh, page we have the the relative image and then the absolute image the absolute image and the image okay so the we have two type of image links because we have absolute and then we have some, some images you need a link from the a browser for you to show okay you copy the link from the browser and then you paste it inside your image attributes whatever attribute it is called the source for the image then it's going to show that you got a link from the browser why some is directly from your local all right so when it is absolute then you get it from the browser it's more like you copy the, the link from the browser when it is relative then it's the ones located inside your directory your folder directory. all right so uh, uh well, moving forward when i when i when i show you guys how to use the image then you guys are going to understand yeah. So how do we create an image on our page? Like I showed you earlier, just open the anchor tag and then IMG. Then we don't have to follow VS Code uh, help because it's going to misuse some of us. So just know it that, okay, you open an anchor tag, you type IMG, then a space bar, then you close it. You can either self-close it or just leave it like this. It's your choice. But let's just use the self-close. And then inside this place, an image has two attributes, has two attributes, not just two, many could have many attributes, but the major thing that you need for an image to show on your web, web uh, website is to include the source attribute and then the alt attribute. The source is, where are you getting the image from? SRC is the source attribute. Where am I getting this image from? So that's the link to the image, all right? If you are copying the image from a browser, from an internet, then you just drop the link in between the source. And then if you are getting the image from your local uh, local folder, let's say from your uh, folder directory, then you just copy the, 
the uh, the uh, relative address of the of the image and then paste it here. So before I do that, I don't have any image on my folder right now. So I'm just going to go online, download an image. That's the first thing. And then I'll copy an image link, and then we'll see how the two works differently. So let me go on. Let me use this. OK, let me just cut. Look for cut. Says she's this fine cut. Okay, so I'm just going to download this save image as. It's working very bad. So. Okay, I think this image cannot be downloaded. I don't know why. So let me just copy the link first. All right, let's use this this one as the link. Uh, uh, let me go here and paste it here. I'm so, I'm so sorry, that was next to work. So I said after including, after adding the, so, uh, the source, that means the link where you get the image from to the IMG, okay? Then you can add an alternative attribute also. Alternative is, what should appear in case there is net bad network and then this image cannot load, load on time. So I can just say cut image. So instead of having an empty uh, box of an attribute, it's very safe SRC is the source of the image. We are getting the image from the auth is an alternative to the image. Okay, the image is not. And what should up? Okay. All right. So and then the width is the size of the image. How do you okay? I want it to be we use uh, uh pixels. Yeah, we use pixels. All right, so in, in program in HTML, we use pixels. In uh, CSS, sometimes also we use page. But let's go on with pixels for now. And then the height of the image, say I want 100 pixels also. 100 pixels also. So let me save. And then view. Okay. So if I should view now, okay, as you can see on my screen, 
now i have the image on my screen all right this is the cat image the one that i copied the link online and trust me if you are copying from online okay you have to be connected to be able to view it that's just the disadvantage of copying an absolute URL from the internet you have to be connected sorry, to you to see it so, all right sorry, and the size okay yeah yeah your, your screen is not showing we're just seeing your code your screen is not showing like the implemented work is not showing on your screen we're just seeing okay. your code okay let me let me do that again can you see my screen now can you see the browser Yes, the browser. I see the browser now. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Sorry, I didn't notice that on time. All right. Okay. Now the image that I added just now here. Yeah, so that's what I can see now. The width specify how I want it to the size I want it to be on my browser on my website. So let me say I want the width to be two hundred now. Then the height hundred. Then I save. Then it's going to get longer. Just you can decide how you want to be from your end okay sammy 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 woman please sharp sharp ask your questions sammy omit yourself and ask questions please, uh, you, i think you all lost you for one is very one is poor image because of course when you play and the network was just um but only you can go back to when you inserted the image to yes okay you mean okay i should I should I should recap on the image bar. Is that yeah, what you're saying? That, that was what we lost. Okay. Right. Okay, okay. That's okay. That's okay. All right. So I will just pick another image. But before that, let me see if I can download one image. I'm trying to download an image, but then it's not downloading. So um let me try and look for one downloaded image already on my file. Okay, let me go to download. Okay, let's use this. Let's use this line. Copy. Okay, so this this thing I'm doing right now is just. I, for example, let's say you, you have an image on your desktop or maybe on your computer already. Just copy everything that we have to create a, a folder to open our VS Code and to start our project in, okay? So the image you want to use on your website must be in that folder, all right? So what you have to do is go to wherever you have the image, copy it, copy the image, and then navigate back to your folder where you are coding from. You don't have to use it from VS Code. Just navigate to it from your desktop or from your file or anywhere, and then paste the image inside your folder, inside the folder that you're working from, okay? Just paste it there. And then you can choose to change the name or however you want to do it, but just make sure you paste the image inside the folder. And let's learn that it is not good to have spaces in between the name of our images as far as we want to use it on our website. It's not good to uh, rename this thing now. Now I have lion spacebar, this one. It's going to work, but it is not best practice. It is best if we join it with anything. You can either use dash or slash. Just find something to join it together and don't make it have space. So that is that. So this image now, I should be able to see it in my root directory, my VS Code root directory. So if I should open now, as you can see, now I can see lion.jpg here. That's because I added it. Let's not get confused. I added it to my root directory, to the project that I'm working on. All right, how did I do that? Navigate to the image you want to use. If you don't have any image, you can go online, and download an image, all right? Well, I would like to go online and download a cat image also so that I can have the cat instead of using the lion. Okay, let's just do it. Just go, okay, I'm online now, then search for cat. I don't know why my browser is not downloading. 
So we just go to images. All right, right click on this and download like this. Right click and save image as. Okay, so now I'm saving as. So saving as, I want to go inside my root directory instantly. I, want to, I don't want to save it on my download first and then copy it and all of that. So I want to go straight to my root directory. That's where I'm working on from my VS code. So this is it, code camp first class. The, the, the interface of this thing may be different from what you have because I'm on Mac. It's very simple on window also. Click on download and then it's going to open where you want to download it. So just navigate to your desktop and then look for the folder that you open to start your project in. It's very easy. Look for the folder that you open to start your project in. Open that folder and then save it inside. Make sure you change the name to something that you can easily uh, remember or something very easy. Okay, so I will change mine to cut and then I will save it. That means I have this cut, even if it is not fine, but then I will still use it like that. Okay, so as you can see now, I have a, another image here, which is the cut.jpg. The first one is lion.jpg, jpeg, then cut.jpg also. So I can use any of these two now. I already used an absolute, all right? How did I use an absolute? By creating an image, I just created image. With VS Code, it makes it very easy. Just type IMG, and then you see a snippet or an options or, yeah, options for you to, to click on. IMG, just click on the first one and enter. Then you see the IMG, the SRC, and then the ALT, the one I talked to, talk, to you about. The SRC is the source of the image, the source of the image. That's where the image is located. And then the alt is the alternative to that image. If the image is not loading yet, then what should show? What should the viewer see? What should the user see? So now the source is going to be easily, we just, since we need cat.jpg here, we need it here. So we can just go to cat.jpg, right click on it here. Just right click on it and then copy relative part. Right click on the image you need. Right click like this and then copy relative parts. Just click on copy relative parts. I'll show that again. Right click on the cast.jpg, right click on it and copy relative parts. It's as simple as that. Then go back to your index.html and then paste it in between the source. So I space it as a value for the source. Control V or Command V. All right. And then after that, add an attribute to it. See, you can see second cut. That's because I used I already used cut. You can use cut again, it's nothing. Okay, let's just use cut again. So let's see, because it's just a cut. So let's add an alt to it as a cut. So and then after that, let me save and then see if I can see it without the width. All right, so now this is the cut. The the, the cut is showing how it's supposed to be, how I downloaded the size from the browser because I didn't specify a width and a height. All right, so that's why it is showing this big. And then I can decide to reduce, can decide to reduce the size. This is how it's showing on the browser. So then I can decide to reduce the size by adding a width. WDC with say okay, 200 pixels and then yeah, just anything you can choose to, to give it any choice. And then, then I'll save. Right click on it like this, just right click. And then copy relative IMG tag inside the source, SRC, in between the SRC, right? Uh, control V, just control and V. That's to paste whatever you copy inside it, all right? And then add an alternative. Without the odds, it's going to work fine. 
but it's best to do a lot of these things, like like we said earlier, for accessing. All right. So that is not showing then the art is going to show like this is a lion something like that and i should have a lion a lion okay what well, is a lion i don't know why it's right say 150 pixels or something and then we we'll say all right and then we have our lion so it's very easy adding image to your web page is very very easy there are millions of ways in adding image but for now html this is the way Let me just free to, to raise your hand now before we move into the next thing. I want us to touch the image, the anchor tag. And so let's just, and it's just 11 22. It's 11. Any question, please? Any questions, please? Let's, let's move forward. So that means we are all clear on I how to okay. include or add, add image to our website. Fine, that's interesting. All right, moving forward. Okay, Aya Kenny, sorry, I didn't see it. All right, Sammy. Okay, Aya Kenny, please, your question. Commit yourself and ask a question. Um, I sh the image, the image uh, tag. I don't know why yes. you, are, you are the slash. Is it composite to close? It doesn't have a ending tag. Like, what if I type um, less than image and close close and to close the tag? I don't know. You are putting a slash. Is it really necessary at the bar? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me? I yes, can I can hear you. you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. I said the image, the image tag, you were adding a um, slash at the back. Is it really necessary for it? After the image, then source and uh, attribute. Is it really necessary to add the, uh, the, um, add the closing tag? Because it doesn't have the closing tag, but we're putting slash there. On my system, VS Code, it doesn't have the slash. And it's worked. Hello. Hello. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes it works, but you know when you are working on a large code base, those kind of little little mistakes are introduced before. That is why. That is why I always advise to put the closing tab most of the time. Because if you're working at a very large to be and you begin to skip those up, those slash at the back, you might get to the point that you put it into break. It might not be something so obvious or something something that small and break your code base eventually. If you are working with some script works and you're using some script mode on your application or the website that you do eventually. So it's just best practice to put the slash every time you're writing. Thank you very much. Uh, does anybody have another question? Anybody? Just, just uh, raise up your hand and I will ask the question. I will answer your question. What is it? Is you? Nobody else. Simple so you can go ahead. 
Okay, thank you. I believe you've answered uh, Aya Kenyabi. So we can move on. Yes, I have. I have All right. You. Thank you very much. And Aya Kenny, for your information, I'm using a pretty, uh, an extension of my VS Code that allows me or uh, helps me to automatically restructure my code the way it's supposed to be. All right. So right now, this image is going to work if I should use it. But then if I should do Ctrl S, Ctrl S, that's when the prettier will work. It's going to trigger the actions of the prettier and helps me automatically add the slash to it. As you can see, let me undo. See, this is it. The image is working fine. All right, it's going to work fine if I do it this way. But then if I should, if I should do Ctrl S, because that is how it's supposed to be. All right, that is the standard. You're supposed to add a closing tag to it. That is how it's supposed to be. If you leave it this way, it's going to work. No problem. But by standard, you're supposed to add a closing tag. So when I do Control S, which I already uh, fixed my uh, uh, prettier to work for me to help me automatically do all of these things, it's going to automatically add the forward slash to, to the image. This is not me doing it. It's just it's just the prettier. So that's just but with or without it, you're good to go. All right. So um, that's about image. Now let's let's um let's talk about link anchor tag. That's another tag that we're also going to be using. Anchor tag is um a tag that you can use to add a link to your website. A link, I mean, when you want to okay, something you can click on that will take you to another page. You to you click on it to take you to another page or reference you to another another part of your image. Ah, sorry, another part of your your website, all right? So we also have a relative uh, tag and then the absolute tag where uh, the target is blank. When it is blank, then it is same way. It is same on your website. When you click on it, it takes you to your website. And then when it is not, uh, when it is, um, when the target is not blank, sorry, when the target is blank, sorry, it opens a new website. Sorry for that. When the target is blank, it opens a new website. All right, that's just how it is. So um, I saw someone raising his or hand now. So please mute yourself and ask a question. Chido, sharp, sharp. Chido, Chido, Chido. Chido. Okay, all right, so let's just go. Now to, to create a link on your website, the same way we have been doing, uh an angle uh an anchor tag then a a just a that's a simple a all right then you can close it it's as simple as that okay no okay an anchor tag sorry is is not mistake on that okay so Let's assume we are typing it ourselves. And then um, close it. Then it's going to automatically generate the closing tag for you. So this is this is the tag used in adding a link to your website. All right, so then also the way image as an attribute, and then the value for us to be able to uh, use anchor tag properly, we have to add an, an attribute which is called the href. That is a reference. Href, which is a reference. That means where are you referencing this link to? Let's say, for example, I want to add um, just link to my Facebook page. My Facebook page. All right. So then this is just going to be a link. But then if I should click on it, it's not going to take me to anywhere, all right? It's not going to take me to anywhere until, okay, this is it now. It's showing, but then it's not clicking because I'm yet to add uh, a href to the anchor tag. It's not going to be clickable until I add a href to the anchor tag. But guys, I would like to break this page so that the link can come down. So let me just use BR. Okay. Okay, let me add another one. All right. So now for, for this link to be to be able to work properly, I'll have to add href 
like I said, that's a reference, referencing to where I want to uh, take my page. I want this link to direct me to. So then I'll just add href, like a normal attribute, the way we added source, alt, width, and height. So we are adding href as an attribute to the anchor tag. And then I can now say, okay, copy the link where you want this thing to take you to. That's where you're going to, uh, that's the link you're going to copy and paste it inside the href. I can say www.facebook.com. All right, so if I should click on this now, if I should save it and then click on uh, the, you see now, so this indicates the fact that it is underlined and in blue, blue color indicate that this particular text is a link. So when you click on it, it's going to take you to Facebook. So let me just, let's just do that. Can we still see my screen? All right, yeah. So let's just do that. Now I already added anchor tag, which is the description is linked to my Facebook. But then the href is www.facebook.com. All right, so if I should click on it now, it's going to take me to this www.facebook.com. So that's just how it's supposed to work. All right, so facebook.com, that's the way it's supposed to work. All right, so then I can choose that I don't want this thing to open to override my current page. I don't want it to override my current page. I want it to open on a different uh, page. I want it to open on a different, instead of overriding my current page like this, which I don't want, I want this page to still be there. But then it should open on a different page. So I'll add target. Then I'll make it underscored blank, underscored blank. So if you want it to open on that same page, you add underscore safe, all right? So sorry. So you add, add underscore safe. It's going to open on that same page. Although that one is by default, opening on that same page. But then I want it to be blank. That means to open a blank page and then open the Facebook there instead of overriding my, my current page. So, and that is going to work. So let me, let me show you guys how that works. Okay, I expect this to do. All right, uh, this is it here. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can still see my screen. So uh, there's a way uh, Safari works that very confusing. So I don't want you to get confused once you get to this. So I open, <laughs> I open the link. <laughs> Sorry. I open the link on my browser on uh, a Chrome browser. Then when I, when I click, this is, the, this is normal page, right? This is my main page. But then when I click, on it, it opens a different page. Instead of overriding my previous page, it opens another page. So that's how target blank works. All right, so that's just a link. All right, so, um, and the reason why it's not working is because I did not add HTTPS uh, to it. So let me just try and open Facebook here. Say facebook.com and copy the link. So we're able to see. Okay, let me just copy this link and then go back to my code and paste it there. All right, so now if I should save and then go back to, just close this, close this. Sorry, come again. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, Oyana Okoro, please can you omit to save and ask a question? Good afternoon. Good morning. Good morning. So I wanted to ask. Um, you said something about that prettier extension. 
is it advisable to also to also have that pretty as an extension to install that pretty as an extension in your to your VS Code or can you just be <laughs> <see it both? laughs> I know you're going to ask, someone is going to ask that. Well, Prettier, like the name is Prettier. So it helps you to arrange your code properly. So it's, it's not like a must something or a not a must something. It's something, it's your choice. If you know how to write your code uh, properly, aligning and all of this thing, then you don't have, you don't need Prettier. But when you get to some level, right, you have millions of things you need to write. Like you have thousands of code you need to write. You don't really have time to, do the alignment and all that's when you need uh prettier although you need it now i won't say if you can okay. download it if you can okay. install the extension all right so it's going to help you but then with or without it you're still good to go okay so thank you good. thank you very much i appreciate it all right boss okay so i've added i copied the facebook link i had to copy the original link so that i can add it to my code and then if i should click on this link now it's going to open a new page and open that facebook for me so that is, I don't want you guys to see my <laughs> dashboard. All right, so that is how um, link works. So, and you, you can, if you see, it's not overriding my current web page. So it's just opening a different blank page and then opening the website, the link on there. So that is link. And then the last thing we are going to talk about today, but well, before I go forward, let's take questions on this link. The link, what you need for the link, the attribute you need is the href. The target is not, is not like so, so important, depending on, on what you want to do. If you are working on your own page and you have navigation, for example, you have own about, um, you have a contact or service page and all of that. So you don't really need to use target blank. No, you don't need it. Okay. So then we must have add another uh, index page, but then we'll get to that later. So in that case, you just, copy the, the address to that index page and then you paste it here, all right? So since you are working on, your, you want to link to your same website, you don't have to use target blank. Everything is going to be within your website. So that's how links works. But then when you are, for example, you, you go to contact us and then you want people to visit your Facebook page from the website, okay? Or you want them to visit your Twitter page from the website or an external link that is not your website, it is best it is best, best practice to include targets blank. That means this link should not override my website. Instead, open a blank page and then open the website there. All right, and make sure, do not forget to add the href. Also, there is always a description in between the href, which is what you want to click on that will tell us, that will take you to that page, okay? So, and also, uh, anchor tag mostly shows itself or indicates itself as an underlined text and a blue color, which tells us that this particular link, uh, this particular text is not just a text, but a link to something. All right, so, uh, and, and I see, and uh, Elijah, this is your question. Okay, thank you, sir. Please, um, I, I want you to talk more on that um, target attributes, the different um, attributes of target. So I really need to know more about that. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, like I explained earlier, uh, by default, by default, a link will open on the page that you open it from. Like if you do not add any target attribute page, it's going to open on that same page that you that you are on. For example, let's say on the website that you built, and then you added a link without uh, uh, a target attribute. When you click on the link, it's going to override if it is an, a new external link on that same page. Okay, that is how uh, a, an ad contact works by default. It works by default like that. So. Um,
so um good morning my question is that the part on that facebook um can you hear me yeah i can hear you i can hear you sorry i have not answered that but just go on so um okay so my question is that on that facebook um design part that facebook part so i don't really get the point very well like can you please like elaborate more on it Sorry to cut that short. Uh, efforts when you open a link, for example, okay, I have a link that I need people to visit. It. I'll explain it when they come to my website, okay? But then this link is not my website. It's an external link that I want people to visit. So I just used Facebook as an example. All right, I use Facebook as an example. It could be any website. It could be google.com, it could be yahoo.com, it could be anything. All right, so you what address to that website. You need the actual address to that website and then copy the actual address. Let's use Google. Uh, this is is open actual address. The link address is mostly through A and then copy it. So come back. Yo, Sorry, uh, I can just go. All right, so like I was explaining, the link that you want to go to from your website. Yeah, it's 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 okay. So, um, <laughs> sorry, can you guys hear me? Yes, you can hear you. Okay, so uh, pending when he actually, uh, uh, simple. So I think you should um, stop sharing and reshare. Your screen is frozen. So um, just to add to what he was talking about, we have like we have two types of URL. We have um, relative URLs and then absolute URL. For relative URLs, those are uh, URLs that are sort of within those ones are within your your folder structure say for instance you want to go to a file that is within your folder then you use um you use a relative url so you just need to do maybe index.html or slash index dot slash index dot html but then if you have if you have to go to an external website you need to copy the URL for that website, just like he did, HTTPS, www, whatever the listen is, and put it here. Then if you don't want it to open on the same page, the same um, the same tab, you have to put this target blank. So this target blank um, takes you to a different tab. I don't know if, if that is clear. So seen is that clear? Um, you, you still need more explanation on that. Did you guys hear me? Or was I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, can hear you. Okay, okay. Well, I think maybe she's clear. I don't know. She's not responding. Okay, responding I don't know. Is, is my is my screen still um is it it's, okay now? It's fine now. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Lochicks. Thank you for your for your little little cheating. 
All right. So, um, okay. So to answer the first question, I believe the second question has been answered. The first question, we have the blank, which takes you to a different page. We have the safe, which I said earlier that is, is by default anchor tag self. And then this safe is that same page is going to override the page. Okay. So it's going to override as the safe. We don't really need to declare this one if we don't we, if we want it to open on that same page because it's safe. All right. And then we have top also. We have underscore top. If you want it to open on at the top of the page, like just at the top of the page. Let's see as an let's let's take an example of top. Let me go back to my cat app and then click on it. Okay, I believe this is also uh okay this is also overriding yeah this also overrides the this also overrides our main page which which means the blank is the best thing you can actually use just the blank and then if you don't want it to if you don't want it to open on that same page that you are just use the blank and then if you want to open that same page you are meaning if you are using a relative URL like said like the target but if it is a a link that will take you outside your website as something different from your website, which is an absolute URL, then it is best for you to add um, target blank. So um, I believe I answered the first question. Okay. Uh, well, time is fast going and i don't know why but then i'm still going to add that last thing i want to add which is um i like to add a form element a form element to Let's, let's just uh, come down and uh, I'm trying to explain that we have um, the text about my cards and then we have different pictures. I'll remove this lion and then we have different pictures of, um, of cards. We added this one using an image, an absolute uh, URL. And then this is a link an anchor tag where it is currently linked to an external, uh, external website. So I'll change that Facebook. Yes, it is. Let's just, let's use um, google.com. Google.com is fine. This is, let's say, link to Google page. Simple so your voice is breaking. Can you see now? How about now? Is this is it okay? Is this still breaking? Please, if you can hear me, please indicate by raising your hand, please. Okay, am I audible enough? Is it not breaking? Let me be sure. Okay, let's assume it's not breaking, share. So, uh, okay, and the last one for today, we are almost out of time. The last one for today, we are going to talk about the form. What is a form element? A form element is a, is a, is, a, I would say, is a container that allows you to, to generate form on your website, form where you can, for registration, for uh, contact, just you know how form looks like on a website. When you are when you visit the website, you need to sign in or you need to sign up. That uh, process, that UI of you signing up, 
inputting your name, your first name, your username, your email address, password, and all. That is a form. Okay, just like we have form uh, in ad copy. Okay, fill in the form to 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 complete your registration. You carry your pen and you write the structure of that form. The way it looks like having spaces where you have to put your name, your first name, and all of those. Just type inside. It's the same thing as it is here uh, in our code. So uh, we are going to we are going to like um, uh, write a code that shows or display that gives us form where we can put in uh, a name, our name, and our email address. Just a very quick one, so we won't go further than that. All right. How do we create a form on our page? How do we create a form on our page? Is by just the way we have been doing. Open. Okay. Open a tag. Open a, a tag and then, then FORM, that's form, and then close it. A form is also a non self closing tag. That's also a form, a, a non self closing tag, because it is required that things should be inside. So this form is just a way of declaring that, okay, this particular section is for form. This particular section is for form. And when I want to be able to be in I want to be able to be in a form format, all right? That's just the declaration, just like the way we have OL and UI. OL declaring that this particular list item is ordered list, and I want the behavior to be in the form of ordered list. So the same way for the form, this particular section is for form, and I want the behavior to be in a form format. So that's just it. All right, inside the form, we have different things we use, just the way we use our OL that we have list item to be able to show us what we do, okay? So at the same, the same thing is applicable to form. When you declare a form, you don't just see anything inside. You have to specify what are the things you want inside the form. Like, you know, inside the form, you can have a text area where you type something. You can have a label, what is telling us what the form is about. And then you can have a button that will tell us that, okay, this, okay, when you click on this button, it should do this. So that, those are the instances of what is supposed to be inside the form. All right, so, and we have two tags that works mostly in a form. So we have the label, that's the first tag. Let's, don't worry about the, the attribute for now, just focus on the tag. That's the label. This label is a tag that tells us the, the, the title or the type. It gives us the title of the particular text that we need at a particular time. It's also more like age. But when you are working with a form, use a label as a standard, okay? So we have a label and then we have an input. 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 So, okay, let's say in the label now, I want to say my name, first name, first name. So this is just a title, the title, or let's say the declaration. Yeah, a title, so that's the best thing to use. The title for the input that is coming next. You know, when you have a form, when you want to fill a form, they'll tell you first name. So under the first name you have, type your first name under, all right? So that, that label, that title is the label that tells you the label of the input that is coming next. That's why we call it a label to the input that is coming. First name, when you get to, maybe after you fill in the first name, then the next one you say another label, then you say last name. Then another label, the input you say email address, just like that. So then the first one is the label, which tells us the type of input that is coming next, what should be put, what should be typed inside the input that is coming next. And then an input. This input is the text area, the text area that we are going to type everything we need to type inside of it. That's what our input is. All right. So input has a very important attribute to pass. The, the label, the Attribute is not important, so that's why I deleted it. Okay, but then the input has a very, very important attribute to add to it. So the attribute is the type. What type of input are you? Uh, do you want to put into your website? What type of input is this one? Is it a text input? We have different type of inputs. I. We have the text. We have the email. We have the password. We have submit. We have a phone number, we have telephone, we have a different type of uh, input, all right? Well, for a simple text, like a name, it's just a text. A name is just a text, it's not a phone number, okay? So if it is a phone number, then we add a number. If it is a date that we need, then we add a date. 
So for this one, the input, the type of the input is name, is text, because it's a simple text. All right, so now let me see what we have here first. The first thing we have the label, and then the second, we have the input, which is telling us, give us a box. It's by default, give us a box. We don't have to do any styling or anything. Give us a box where we can type our first name. So now let me save this and then see what we have. Okay, before that, so we can see what we have properly. Let me add a break here. Break. Copy it again and add another one. Add another one. Okay. All right. This is the output of that. As you can see, this is the label of the form. Okay, now it's telling us put in your name here. And this is the input that we added to the form. This is the label. This is the input that we added to the form. So now you can click on this input and then type anything. You can say uh, uh, Femi Falana. That's your first, sorry, first name. That should be Femi. Let's assume Femi or let's say Falana. Okay, so it's just, uh, this is just a way of showing us, okay, when you have a label, you can have a form, uh, an input, a label and an input. That's how form works. So, and then we can add another one, just, uh, you can easily copy, right? But then if you want to know it best, just don't copy, write it again, do your label, and then close it, and then add last name last name and then under it do your input again type your input put the type what type of input is this it's still a text because a last name is still a name okay so just put text and then close it an input is a self-closing tag as you can see you don't have to you don't have to be confused about that anymore an input an input tag is a self-closing tag you don't need a, a, a second closing input for you to close it you close it by itself self-closing tag so that's how it works the label is not a self-closing all right so now let's save this and then see what we have again all right see now we have first name and then we have last name we have the first name and then we have last name so but for this thing to look a little bit nice we can add bricks into it we can add bricks there are a lot of ways of styling form but for now we focus on adding bricks to it so let me say I want to have the first name on top and then the input under it. So let me just add break here, break. So, okay, let me save first. <clears throat> now I have it this way. Okay, now let me add break for the last name also so I can bring it down also, save. And then, all right. So, but then I want the last name to come down also. So here yeah, I can add double break to have, Okay, so let me save it and then, <clears throat> all right, this is what we have. Uh, well, I wish I can just shift this thing upward. But can we see the screen? That Can we see the form here? I'm trying a way to see if I can shift my screen upward, but then I can't see. Can we see the form here? So, yes. um, all right, thank you. Thank you very much. So now this is telling us that put in your first name. Yeah. In the input. All right, put in your first name in the input here. Yeah? And then when you're done with that, come down and put in your last name. So we can just like an example I gave, you can say um, Falana. Okay, now no, Femi. Femi, and then the last name as Falana. Okay, so that is just that. So, and then after that, we can add another type of input, email address. You can add email address. Let me do something before we do that so that we can see it properly. Let me add breaks. One, two, three, four, five, six. I just need us to see something so we can have space on there. All right, so the break is just for us to be able to you know, have more space so we can have this one in the middle. Okay, so now let's let's add another input, an illegal and an input. That's another form. Let me just copy this so we don't waste much of our time. I drop it here. Remember, I want I want my label, the third one, to come down. I don't want it to be beside the input. 
I don't want to be beside the input. <clears throat> so I'll add break here and then another break. So we can have at least one single space in between of it. All right. So then I'll add this one email address. Email address. Okay, then I will change the type of the input to email. Although it's still a name, but then just change the type to, so, uh, sorry, it's still a text, but we change the type of the uh, input to email address. All right, so then we have it here also, email address. If you notice, because I change the type to email, if I click on it, it's going to give me ideas of my email address that I've been using because, you know, it's, it's an email. So it's definitely expecting what should be inside this input should be an email. All right, so this one are text. Okay, so it is just a text. So it's not giving me anything because I can type anything in the text, but then email is expecting to have something like an email with at something.com. So that's why it's giving me the suggestion of this is my email. All right, and then the last, not, not last one before this, let me copy this and then let me add here. Let me say uh, date, let me just add a date of birth. Let me say date of birth, date of birth, for example. And then here the type will now be date, type of the input will be date. All right, so after saving, oh, sorry, I forgot to add the breaks. Let me add this break, copy, and then paste it here save and then yeah we have an of date as you can see when you specify the type of the input it automatically generates it for you you don't have to like add code all of these things out just automatically generating a an input for date for you so you can click on this and then you have the calendar where you get to pick the dates that you want to pick so that's the beauty of having a form and the use of inputs and label so now the last thing we are going to add again is, I hope we are following, right? So the first one I added was type uh, text. I'm coming in Adina Charles, I'll get to you soon. And the second one is the last name, which is also a text. The third one is an email address. Then in the input type is email. The fourth one is date of birth. So the input type for that is date. Most of these things, you just have to know it, all right? You can, if you, if you can't remember anyone, if you need an input type for something, there is no input type for everything. So it has specific one that input type works for. Okay, so everything in the world. The network is breaking, simply so. Let me just uh, copy this and paste. I need that. I don't need the label for submit. Okay, I believe we are hearing me though because the break here. Hello, can 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 we hear me now? I'll try to restart my network. Am I audible enough now? I'm still breaking. Please, if I'm audible, if you can hear me, please raise your hand, please. Let's call it a day. We're almost out of out of time already. Okay, thank you, thank you. All right, so the last one, the last input we are talking about today, is the submit type of input. So that automatically generates a submit button for us. So inside the form, we have the first name then the input text, the last name, the input text, the email address, the input email, the date of birth, the input date, and then the input for submit. That one, we don't need any label for submit. So that's why I decided to ex exclude uh, the label there. All right, so then I, I have the input type submit and it gives me a submit here. So when I type everything I want, um, uh, say, okay, for me, and then email address, let's assume this. And then I give this, then click on submit. So although there's no function for that name, 
yet but then as you can see my page reloads that's to show you that okay the submit is working all right but then let me show you something if you did not add an email address okay okay let's not get to that yet maybe next week we'll talk about required and not required so that's just basically how form works the first name the last name with an input type text input type text input email address input type email address the date of birth with an input type date of birth and then the submit button uh the submit type of input so as simple as that you don't have to get confused when you want you will need a form on your website open a form tag a form element open a form element and then inside the form element you have your label then the inputs although when we get to styling we won't have to include all this break anymore we are, we are going to style it properly i want to mention the type of uh, uh display this input have because we are not there yet so we can just use the break for now to break it down to the next line so we are breaking the first name down we are breaking the text to the next input to, down to the next line that's why we added one break and then the second in uh, label we wanted to start from the next line with additional line in between as we added two breaks two br two br so then we have the email the date of birth and submit so that is that about uh the form it's very easy so you just keep adding you keep adding changing the label adding adding and until you to so achieve the type of inputs or form that you need all right uh someone raises and recently um Charles Adina, please you're free to ask a question now. Sorry, Kyoji. Good morning, simple. So um my Good question morning. is I think you've answered it, but let me just ask it. I want to ask that these boxes after the first name and the last name and email, are they predetermined? And um I also noticed that when you entered your email, the whole text was not showing. Is there any way one can increase the box of that um, email box? That's after the email, the gap box on that, so that it can contain all the visible text of the email. Or is it when we get to CSS? Uh, okay, thank you, Mr. Charles. I see you're looking forward. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. The input has a predetermined size uh, border. As a predetermined size and border that, you know, like I said, is is um is by default giving you this one it's just generating this one for you by default then you are to decide you know how do you want this thing to look like by styling it yeah by styling it that's when it comes to uh the size not being enough for the uh my, for the email because the, everything is not showing all right so you have to decide on your own how you want it to look like you want it to be longer than this you want it to be do you want the height to be more than this? Do you want it to have a background color? Do you want to change the line, this line here? You can choose to change this line. You can choose to change the color of it. You can choose to change. You can just style it anyhow. But by default, the, the, the generated one by HTML for you, by default, is this type. All right? And then uh, it is left for you to style it however you want to do. If you notice the date of birth, it's not even as long as all of this. Okay, because it is a generated one for you, but it's just generating it for you, helping you out to know, okay, this is an input, all right? And then you now choose to decide how you want it to look like. For now, to make this visible, it's going to be styling. All right, and then we are not going to style it now. I'm sorry, Charles. So we get to that very, very soon. It's not going to be long. Okay, so uh, that is that. For now, just manage, <laughs> just manage the input. All right, you can enter it and then, go forward to see what the other uh content is okay uh sammy am i did i answer your question charles yes 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 thank you you're welcome sir uh sammy obuma question is yes, that okay so you've answered one of my questions all right the I'm second one i'm to ask you like thing but the next one is this of me that means when you piece of me you take just replace this means it's working so to add a link to this for me, that you as we as this page better. I think I didn't get that, please. I didn't get the submit question. It's submit, right? Then you can that's why you pick this for me, your page just your page will close. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay, that means if one would submit this, one submit this form, so you have to use H one on that means that and uh, submit and you can. 
Okay. Well, honestly, to be honest, I didn't really get what you're trying to say, but let me believe well, that. This for me, this, as well as for me, to, uh, uh, on another on that platform, I mean, who's age back as okay 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 i think i get that now yeah well <laughs> you guys are looking too forward okay um if you want to submit that there are different ways in which you can uh change the behavior of your submit button okay there are different ways to change the behavior of your submit button but i don't really want to go into that now for now, what the submit is doing is just submitting. It's just, you know, it's a default behavior for submit to when you click on it to refresh the page so that you 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 know that okay, this my uh form has been submitted. There are things to check, there are other things to check when submitting. At some point, you need to check if all of these values have been imputed because some persons will just come to your website and then just click submit, and then your, your page will start loading. But then you have to check that. Okay, is this thing field? Is this thing field? Is this thing field? So, but for now, we don't want to go to that yet because it's a little bit forward. Okay, what the submit button is doing now is not even submit button is not even looking at these guys at all. It's just doing his own thing because. Every submit button will have to reload or submit something and then reload the page. Okay, that's just how submit button So when it's time for us to submit and then take different pages. Yeah, we are going to do that HRF stuff and then we link it to a different page and take uh, our input or the split when we get there. Thank you very much, Sabi. Did I answer your question? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm very sorry for that. So Oh, network around there is really bad. So, Sammy, I want to ask if I answered your question. Like I said, yes, we are going to add link by the time we get to redirecting that submission to a different page or to do something else. So, I said the submit has a, has a lot of behaviors, and we get to de decide. We get to decide the kind of behavior we want for the submit to perform. Okay. So, um, yeah, I believe that answers that. So moving forward very, very soon, it's not going to be long. We're going to tell ourselves or explain ourselves on how to uh, um, uh, impact the behavior or change the behavior of the submit button. But for now, it's just doing its own behavior in here. Okay, so uh, if I answer that, the last person, I see another person's hand was raised. Chidel, Chidel, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, please, your question. Um, at that time, you are doing that A tag, that uh, anchor tag. You wrote target slash underscore blank. But when you were explaining it, your your network was bad. So I could not grab what we are trying to like explain. That was why uh, I was you can just say it. Okay. <laughs> okay, you mean this blank here, right? You can see my screen. Yeah, if you can see my screen, yeah, this is the blank. Okay, like Mr. Gochuk said, we have absolute URL and then relative URL. Okay, so the URL, the URL is absolute when it is an external link. I mean, a URL is a link. Let's not get that uh, confused. A URL is a link. Okay. So uh, when, uh, sorry, it's an absolute URL, well, it is external, when you copy it from somewhere, 
for example, I'm on Facebook and Facebook, from Facebook, I want to be able to click on this link to take me to Twitter, for example. So that Twitter on that Facebook link is uh, on that Facebook page is an absolute URL. And then I wouldn't want Twitter to now override my Facebook page. I want it to open on a different page so that I can see it there. So that's the, that the reason why we needed to add at uh, underscore blank. That's the reason why we needed to add underscore blank. For example, like we have here, my page, my cart page, if I want to open a Facebook or a google.com uh, page of my website here, if I click on this thing now, because I added the target blank, okay, because I added this, it's going to take me to another page. It will just automatically open another page on my browser. Here's an example. Click on it, and you can see automatically it opens a different page and then open up if google.com. My page is still there. My cat app page is still there. This is it. And then this is the Google that will just open. So that is the importance. That is why we need um, link. We don't need the target. We can just, since a relative link is a link within our website, right? We don't need the target plan or whatever. Everything is going to be happening within our website. Just the anchor tag. And then let me show you. Let me remove this tag first, this target, and then let me save. So if I should open that link again, it's going to override this my page instead of opening it again, instead of opening it somewhere else. As you can see, it overrides my page. Now my card page. Your screen is angry. Your screen is angry. So the best way within my website and I can just remove the target and light override my page. So that's just the difference between the okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes. I can see it. Thank you. Oh God, the way my network is really dealing with me. Very, very sorry, guys. Okay, so um, I believe that explains, that answers your question, Sha. So the target is to take us uh, We don't want to write a page while uh, target. We don't have to use the target. So um, I think that will wrap that up for today. So uh, thank you very much for joining us. I uh, would like to take questions. Like take questions, take questions. If you have questions, please raise your hand so we can call it a day. We are already out of time. Questions, questions, please. Okay, Charles, number one. Okay, I think it's only Charles. Thank you, guys. I believe we all understand. And all right, Charles Adina, please let's just answer uh, ask a question. Okay, my question is actually unrelated to. So let me just ask. I saw one of my friends' Facebook page recently, and it was showing pink. 
like the normal web page is showing pink color. So I was curious. I want to know is there any way somebody can edit somebody's or somebody, somebody else's page, you know, to suit his own um space, something like that. So, okay. You get my yes, yes, I get you by the by the pink you mean. You mean like the dim of the Facebook, right? Is the, 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 the dim yes, or the text? The text, everything uh, is on it is just in different styles. Okay, yeah, I think yeah, there's a feature on Facebook where you can style uh, uh, the the interface, you know, the interface of how you want it to look like. It is not you cannot do it from your own end. It's not like a code you write and then you <laughs> you integrate it to the website. It's something they provided. It's a feature of Facebook provided by itself, so that user, if you look, if you are using Facebook Messenger, you can decide on the background you want for one person. You can decide on the font you want to have on my chat and all of that. So the same thing is applicable on uh, the platform that you opened. So there's a feature where you get to decide how you want it to look like. Mostly these days, people, uh, Facebook uh, website owners want users to be able to choose the way they want to interact with their website. Okay, so they wanted to have the, the authority of changing the looks of the website, the color and all of this. That's just the feature with Facebook provided. So it's not something you can, no, you can't. You, you don't have the access to the, to the database or the code base where you can now change the colors. No, you can't. It's just a feature they provided for you. Oh, okay, I get that now, thank you. You're welcome, sir. All right. So, uh, well, thank you very much, guys, for joining us. Before we call it a day, I'll ask Mr. Akimi Nola, Akimi Nola, if he has something to say, so you can just say it now. Tell us what you want to tell us, boss. Well, I don't really have anything much to say. Like, as I always say, you can't get anything all in what You have to go back watch the YouTube video again, get all that resources from anywhere, anywhere possible, no one is an island of, an island of knowledge. You just have to do it. Go for it, man. I mean, be intentional. If you are not intentional, you can to do this You have to be intentional. So, we meet, we meet on this court. I'm always on this court. Okay, thank you, boss. Thank you, man. Thank you, Mr. Akimbobola. All right, so um, let's get ready for another task. I uh, We are going to be having another task today. I know we've all completed our previous tasks and then we don't have a means to submit yet. That will be made available very, very soon. I'm very sorry for the delay. So we are working on a platform where we are all going to, it's going to make the submission very easy for us. All right, so we are working on that platform and it's going to be available very, very soon. So, and also I would like to say, if we, uh, yeah, yeah, let's just, let's just come down and then get ready for the task that will come. I'll drop the task uh, on or before 2 p.m. today. All right, so you can just open it. If you have any question that is not clear, you can always reach out to the mentors or myself. And then uh, if you have reaction, something you don't want, you don't like, just feel free to reach out to us and then we'll address that. Okay, so um, thank you very much and have a wonderful day. We'll meet again same time on Tuesday next week. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you too. <laughs> Bye. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. You're welcome.